So around three months ago, the MetaQuest 3 came out. And I didn't really have much of an interest in VR at that point. So I didn't really follow how good it was and I, I didn't bother to buy one. But in part because I was sick, I ended up purchasing one. And I, you know, for two weeks on and off, dicked around with it. Here it is. Ooh. I can tell you, whatever the price of this device, where you're from, you will end up having to buy accessories for it. Because the uh, head strap that comes with it is not very good. The battery life isn't that good. So most people end up buying like a battery pack that sits on the back. These things, like the, the little wrist strap here, like you can get a better wrist strap, which I, I, I also got. It's just a bunch of things you can get for it. I even have like a, a hot swappable battery that I can like put on the side. It's like clipped in here and like it plugs in here. And then you can like clip on as many of these as you like, like they clip into here. But all in all, it is a pretty cool device. Having gotten it, it kind of made me a little bit hyped for VR, at least temporarily. Like I was like, this looks pretty damn good especially considering the price and it isn't painful to wear like it's quite light and its distribution on your head is just right as a person who whose only experience in VR before was the Valve Index which is a huge beast of a device and that was many years ago was that like three years ago it required a bunch of base stations I could only use it in this room it, it, it just wasn't worth the hassle to play but with my MetaQuest 3 whenever I want to use it I pick it up and then I'm using it any room anytime anywhere don't even need that much space, especially depending upon what I'm doing. I sit in like the, the hallway of like my cupboard or something and I, I can play Beat Saber and, and it's, it's fine. The ease of use, not having to do PC VR, connecting cables to the PC and just having a, a standalone device is so amazing. Well, obviously the graphics and FPS and stuff will be better with PC VR where you're connecting directly to a huge system. Like it would be better doing that. The freedom of no cables is just too good. And there are now things that you can use to use your PC hardware over wireless to get a better experience on your system as well. The hardware and the idea of VR based on this machine is pretty cool. The problem with it though, is there's not enough good experiences in VR. The experiences can be interesting or different or enhanced a little bit, but it's still not worth the hassle. I can totally imagine five to 10 years or something jumping into it again and being like, this is so cool, but from everything I tested on the device, none of it really wowed me beyond like first going into something and being like, wow, everything looks so cool. I would rather be on my PC playing a different game. The games I played were like Assassin's Creed Nexus VR, which is an Assassin's Creed game built specifically for the VR. And so you're you're walking around, there's I know, an Ezio kind of character, whatever, you've got like a, a blade in your wrist and you can actually like fling and the wrist come, the blade comes out and you kill someone or whatever. And you, you physically climb up stuff, but you obviously don't have the experience of like walking around. You're just using your joystick to move yourself and stuff. So you never really feel super immersed, but obviously you are more immersed than playing a game on your PC or console. And it was cool in a way, but just it wasn't that amazing of a game. I don't know if they're, if they're limited because they have to make something for VR. Well, I guess they would be limited on what they can put in, what, what people will not get sick doing or what have you. But the game just didn't feel fun. It just felt like a VR gimmick game and that's it. Boneworks is another one that people said was just amazing. Like so good, like the best experience you can have in VR. And I didn't really like it. The two biggest things that stopped me from liking the game was that I hated how much I had to like open my menu, bring out my inventory, pull out a magazine for my gun, stick in the magazine or whatever, pull it back and fire seven shots and then do the same thing again. It just wasn't fun. The inventory management was just awful. I, I would have thought they would have something where you can have like a couple of mags or whatever on, on your side of your belt and you could just grab them and throw them in as you go. But no, it's just inventory over and over and over again. And every time you have to do the inventory thing, it just breaks any sort of immersion that you'd built up. And the enemies, of course, were boring and, and, and they all looked the same. Like I only got through like the tutorial kind of area. I pl played it for like an hour or something, but it just didn't really grip me. And the story being told through clipboards that you find, having to stop, you know, figure out how to move, move the clipboard so you can read it, read it, and then continue. Like it just dragged me out of the experience. So I had to decide if I wanted to just play the game and not know what's going on or know what's going on and continuously be brought out of the experience of playing the game. It just wasn't fun. Given that a lot of other people have loved Boneworks, it's clearly like I must be a little bit different from other people. And one potential reason for that is what I wrote here on Twitter. 
I don't really care about immersion in games. I don't want to self-insert myself into the role of the character. I don't want to be there. I just want fun and engaging experiences. I think this is why I haven't found VR games all that appealing over the last week of playing them. Except Beat Saber, obviously. Great stuff. I'll talk about Beat Saber in a second. That might be one of my issues. Like, I recognize that I'm more immersed in the game playing in VR, but I just don't put a lot of value in that. I don't think the gameplay experiences are good enough for me to really want to play them. For people who really like immersion, they're probably willing to take a little bit lesser of a gameplay experience to have that cool immersion to actually be there, you know? But I'm not, because I just don't care about that. As far as Beat Saber is concerned, it was probably like the shining star of using this headset. I will wake up in the morning, do like 30 minutes to 40 minutes or something of just hitting all those squares while the songs play. And I would enjoy myself and I get a little bit of exercise and they'll be all good. I, ca I still can't do expert. I'm still stuck on normal, but I'm hoping to get better at it so I can even more go to town, right? But after I did like a lot of the campaign, I did a lot of the songs, I was surprised how few songs Beat Saber had. Like Beat Saber doesn't have some huge library of like a thousand songs. They have like 60 songs. Something that you can get over in a couple of weeks. Uh, the songs aren't like classics that you know. They're like largely original songs, I think, that are made for the game. So it's not like the things that you can really vibe to uh, after you play them like 10 times. And that really surprised me because of the way that people talked about how amazing Beat Saber was. And I, I looked up on the shop and it's like, pay 20 bucks for one Queen album. I'm like, are you, are you high? That business model for songs hasn't existed for like a decade plus, m more than that. You're, you're wanting a, a, an album that released 50 years ago. I mean, pay 20 bucks for that. Just one, as a, an album that released 50 years ago because you put some squares to it, that's fucking insane. I expected them to have like a, a week to week model where every week you get access to a different album or something. And then you, if you want to permanently have that album, you can pay money to permanently have it or something. Like that kind of uh, subscription kind of model or something or, You'd be able to put your own songs in or something and it would generate some squares for it, but there's none of that there. And so I'm like, how is this game so successful considering that? And I looked up how to put in custom songs and while it was a pain in the ass to do, once done, it makes Beat Saber the game that everyone says is amazing. People have put like thousands of songs on there and it's sometimes hard to find the best ones or what have you, or, or ones that have that have been made very well. But like once you have a good selection of them, you can like really vibe to some uh, great songs. It just sucks though that the devs of this game must be aware that the piracy scene, the the custom, the the fan sort of thing, it, it, uh, they're carrying the game. But it, it's just weird to think that you can pay ten bucks for like every song in existence, listen to them as much as you want every month on Spotify. But if you want a single album in, on Beat Saber because you want squares to match the song, you got to pay twenty bucks an album. That's just fucking nuts. Basically, Beat Saber in the VR scene is amazing entirely because of piracy, the custom song stuff. That being the best experience kind of showcases the problem where the baseline experiences on a VR headset don't seem that amazing. But if you're willing to like dig deep into the minutia, the, the, the really amazing stuff that people have made for the system, you probably have amazing experiences. But I just don't really want, to, really want to go to that kind of effort. And you can't expect the average consumer to do that either. So how is the MetaQuest ever going to really take off if you, you really need passionate people who are willing to sit for a couple of hours, you know, downloading and uploading different things to the headset and your PC to, to get access to this stuff? It, it just seems nuts to me. Like what I'm saying is the hardware is getting cool, but the experiences in VR, I don't think are keeping up. No one's using the device as fully as they, they should be able to. I, I don't claim to be an expert. This is just like two weeks of looking, but this is how a normal consumer would look at things. The one thing that I thought might save it is pornography because people obviously have talked about in history how different technologies have taken off based on its, its ability to provide good porn experiences. They always say that about VHS, for example. So I took a look around and MetaQuest does not allow any of that stuff on their systems. I found out that Steam five years ago uh, changed their policies to allow adult content to be allowed on Steam. I was under the impression that they didn't allow that stuff. I thought they didn't allow any nudity on Steam. Sure is what I know. But having a look at it all, it is all really finicky to set up. Usually requires you to pay actual money to get any kind of good experience. And even experiencing what's on offer is not worth it. In fact, I don't think I've ever felt shame or I felt pathetic looking at pornography. Before. I've never felt those feelings ever in my life. But experiencing VR porn, I somehow felt pathetic. It was almost like 
I was trying to be someone else. I was experiencing someone else's life. And that just felt weird to me. Like, if I wanted to be this person, I would be attempting to pursue things in life that would lead me to here, but I'm not doing that. So why am I trying to fake be this person? I, I'm not, not everyone's gonna have this experience, but I have these particular ideas of identity and self that just felt violated by being in a VR porn environment. Along with that, the current level of technology does not exist to give amazing VR experiences for pornography. Even in 5K, it, the clarity is just not like one-to-one -one real life. It still looks fuzzy. And that might be in part because, you know, maybe they're not going to enough effort. Maybe they're not recording in the right ways. I'm not sure. Basically, what I'm saying is, if you think about getting a MetaQuest 3 to get like an amazing porn experience, from my limited perusing of what's on offer, I don't think that's a good investment on your part. And I don't think Zuckerberg is trying to go that angle to get people to adopt this technology. And that might be a mistake. Because as, as we say, there have been technology in the, technologies in the past that people have reckoned pornography has helped to, to spread, to propagate. So in summary, I don't think VR offers good enough experiences for it really to be worth it unless you're so interested in living a completely different life and being super immersed in like a VR chat kind of thing that you're interested in that online social environment. So that's something that I did not experience or bother looking into because that's just not my vibe. I will probably keep playing Beat Saber. I thought about doing some live streams related to VR, but I just, I don't want to. There's nothing that I really want to show people. I don't think doing Beat Saber or whatever would be particularly interesting. I think the VR videos I made a few years ago with a couple of the games were okay, but none of those experiences either was so amazing that I feel like I need to play them again. Interestingly though, turns out I am i don't get as sick in VR as I thought I would. People talk about how you need to get like VR legs where you um, have to be able to get used to moving around with a joystick where you're not moving your legs, but you're like zooting around the map. And I didn't really get sick doing that, surprisingly. Given that, I think I might try GTA 5 VR at some point. Because there is a third party mod that was made that Rockstar sent the cease and desist to, but obviously it still exists online in places. But you have to downgrade your game to a particular patch to be able to play it and all that stuff. But it, it does work apparently pretty well. It was a thing that people made videos out of many years ago, I think. Um, and, and it's always been on my list of things to do. And now that I've got this system, uh, maybe I will. We'll see. Stop! Now that I have your attention, hit the like and subscribe button. Thank you. I wish you all the best.